Welcome to the On Your Mind podcast, where we are changing the mental health narrative, bringing hope and solutions. Here's your host, Timothy J. Hayes, psychologist. Dr. David Gruder playfully refers to himself as a recovering psychologist and professional troublemaker. In actuality, he is a 12 award winning, best selling integrative psychologist who radio TV interview report named America's integrity expert. Drawing on an unparalleled range of board leadership, training, consulting, business, and clinical roles that he has filled over the past five decades, he founded the Center for Enlightened Self Sovereignty. Its purpose is to help usher in spiritually elevated next chapter in humanity. Through the center, Dr. Gruder works with concerned citizens, government and community leaders, business owners and executives, influencers in the media, education, and the helping professions to maximize their positive impact in their respective fields. Dr. Gruder, the last time we talked, we were outlining uh, problems. We're outlining some of the sources of them and how to understand them. And if you would, tell us a little bit about the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty and how it might help us craft some solutions. Mm -hmm. Well, the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty, I see with the advantages of 2020 hindsight (laughs) that my entire life was architected in order to enable me to, to develop is one version of helping people step into an enlightened future for humanity and for themselves. And to do that through a roadmap and skills development and in community with others who are, as I refer to it, like-spirited, like-mind, like-hearted rather, like-spirited, like-hearted, and diverse-minded. Because if we're all of the same mind, all we see is our own reflection. So like-spirited, like-hearted, and diverse-minded. And that's what the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty is is, uh, is about. It's a combination of that kind of supportive community that is uh, devoted to helping develop, helping emerge an enlightened version of humanity's future and are each doing whatever their part in helping that emerge is in their own unique, authentic ways. And how do you propose helping that come into being? Well, I am the kind of person, and I know I'm not alone in being this way, although I also know that some people don't need what I'm about to describe, but I do. I'm the kind of person who does best when I have a roadmap, when I have a a sense of the journey that will help me get where I want to go in my own unique personal ways. So not some kind of conformity journey, but just kind of like a, uh, a superstructure that helps me navigate my own personal journey. And so the centerpiece of the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty is something called the SPARK Blueprint. SPARK is an acronym. We'll get into it. But it is it is that kind of roadmap that I wish I had when I was growing up. I wish I had when I was in my 20s. I wish I had all the way up to more recent years uh, and uh, in context you know, uh, as we're recording this, I just recently celebrated my 70th birthday. Well, I wish I had this roadmap most of my life before the roadmap dropped in. Understood. There are many of us (laughs) who reach a certain point of our maturity and think, oh, if I knew then what I know now. Yes, yes. And of course, you know, the trap of that is that we could shame ourselves for not having known that then, or we could rejoice in all of the experiences, both lovely and undesired and unasked for, that have helped us reach the point where we can now step into a more elevated version of ourselves and a more elevated version of our impact in the world. Clearly the healthier option. I think so. That's my bias. Mine mine as well. (laughs) 
So now we have something called revisioning humanity as a kind of an antidote to the hijacking. Yes, and I that's what I originally called it was revisioning humanity. Uh, I I have come to call it reimagining humanity. Okay. And so give us a little overview of the reimagining humanity and the role of the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty in that. Sure. I'll start with a book that I'm going to mention because a lot of people read it. It was a wild bestseller back in its time when it was released somewhere in the 2012, 2014 range. I forget the exact year. It was a book called Sapiens, and it it explored the history of humanity from the very beginning, pretty much up until what was then present day. And the author's name was Yuval Noah Harari. And I'm mentioning his name because I'm going to bring him up again in a moment. But the big, the big thing that I got, the biggest takeaway from his book, Sapiens, that I got was his point that he really hammered home re very, very well in my judgment, which is that not everything that has caught on in the history of humanity has actually been good for humanity. Just be, because something catches on doesn't necessarily mean it's good or, or that it's bad, that there are things that have caught on in the history of humanity that have been proved to be good for us and not so good for us. And so his whole premise was that it's really time for us to be much more conscious about what we embrace. And that led to his follow-up book, which he published in, I think, 2016 or somewhere in that time frame, give or take. And that book was called Homo Deus. And that's where I'm leading in answering to in answering your question. His book, Homo Deus, proposed that we humans are now smarter than God, that Homo Deus in Latin means human God, right? And we're we're now smarter than whatever a person's name for higher love and wisdom is, God or Allah or higher self or nature or doesn't matter, whatever, whatever that is for that person, that we're now smarter than God as human beings. And so the smartest among us should be responsible for crafting the future of humanity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, right? And as a consequence of that book, his follow-up book, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, because of his book Homo Deus, became a poster child and spokesperson for the World Economic Forum, which is offering a version of of humanity's future that's based on the notion that we are smarter than God and that a small group of people should dictate for the masses what the what humanity's best future should look like. Okay. That version of uh, Homo Deus, because I, I, I believe there are two versions of Homo Deus. That version of Homo Deus I call Homo Machina, meaning human machine. That That's a version of the future in which we are turned into 21st century chattel, commodities, serfs, slaves, whatever term you want to use, who are supposed to find ways to be happy while meeting the objectives of the few that are uber powerful and uber wealthy. Well, that's one version of Homo Deus. The thing I agree with Harari about is that the species called Homo sapiens is over. That I agree with him about, which is part of what he asserted in the book Homo Deus. But I completely disagree with his version of what the next species of humanity is supposed to be, which is this thing that I call, this version of Homo Deus that I call Homo Machina. The version of humanity's future, the version of Homo Deus that I am certain is supposed to be the elevated future for humanity is what I call homo spiritus, which is human spirits, where we are effective conduits of higher love and wisdom 
in the physical universe. So my whole notion of reimagining humanity is about alerting people that there are two versions of humanity's future that are rattling around right now. And the two versions are, are being articulated in different ways by different groups, like the World Economic Forum is not the only group that's articulating a version of what I call homo machina as humanity's future. They're just the highest profile uh, group that's doing that. Uh, and there are multiple versions of or articulations of homo spiritus as well. But in the end, there are these two future paths for humanity's next species after homo sapiens, homo homo machina, and homo spiritus. And my bias is that in reimagining humanity, if we don't support and step into embodying and facilitating homo spiritus, we are going to implode. And the, the, the thing about your work and writings that I've been exposed to so far related to that is that anybody listening to this could easily say, oh, so you, you think your group of elites should be deciding how humanity goes forward, not the group of elites that the World Economic Forum would choose. And the thing that I've gotten from your writing is that you're putting out the invitation here to anybody who's interested to join in this process. It's a collaborative process to, to use a roadmap like your Spark profile and bring their individual creativity and their individual ability to channel this creative force we call light or love or life and bring it through them in a way that's unique and creative and productive and then collaborate with others. So, so yes. what have you got for us in terms of what is this acronym SPARK? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's based on, you know, all of us are smarter than one of us, right? that all of us collectively are. And, and so what I envision in great audacity beyond the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty, much larger, like a, a center of centers, is the world's largest focus group that the, that the planet has ever seen of individuals like what you're, who you're talking about, people who really want an elevated future for humanity and are collaborating to co-create and discover and co-create what that is. So you're quite right in what you pointed out. So the roadmap that I've offered to facilitate that is this thing that called the SPARK blueprint. And SPARK is an acronym for five ingredients. The S in SPARK is shatter spells. And we covered that in the prior segment in this two-part interview. Shatter spells. The P in Spark is picture your version of an elevated future. The A in Spark is align your purpose and your paradigm, meaning self-view and worldview, with that purpose that you've pictured in the P part of Spark. So the A, to, uh, the A in Spark is align your purpose and paradigm with the future you've pictured. The R is reimagine your tools, your skill sets, so that you restructure your focus on the skills that you as an individual, no, no prescription here, but each individual identifies as their highest level skills upgrades that they need to upgrade in order to fulfill their chosen role in helping their version of humanity's most enlightened future emerge. And then the K is Kindle collaboration, the K in Spark. And Kindle in collaboration is, is what I was saying before, that, uh, you know, there's an old saying about, about our own personal healing work. While we have to do the work for ourselves, we can't do all of it by ourselves. 
And the same is true with, with elevating humanity. We can't do it by ourselves. We do it in collaboration by joining together in supporting various initiatives, each of us individually choosing which initiatives those are because the initiatives we've chosen to be involved with are ones that help us actualize our unique purpose in helping our vision of humanity's most enlightened future to emerge. That's the spark blueprint in a nutshell. As you were talking about it and the collaboration, right, this kindling collaboration, I'm thinking about uh, the book Redemption. You're familiar with that book and, and it's... Uh, I was featured pretty heavily in it. I pull from that book what was presented to most of us who haven't read Darwin's book, Origin of the Species, is that that book's about survival of the fittest and the strongest leads and all of that. And what Bernie was talking about, did I get his name right? Yes. The author is Bernie Dorman. Right. Was. He's, he's deceased right. now. But right. But Bernie what Bernie Dorman. was talking about was that there's so much more in nature and even as described by Darwin in that book about collaboration and cooperation and that those are far more powerful dynamics in the world. And, and it just makes all the sense in the world if you stop and think about it what skyscraper was ever built by one person. Mm -hmm. And and so um, that book and all of its repetition, there were a lot of themes repeated throughout that book, is yes. what was flooding into my mind when you were talking about the kindling collaboration and, uh, and the value of it. Because, uh, you know, any one person who's got a great idea is just one person. And yet there's a lot more going on here than just one of those sparks of divinity or the one mind or, you know, I, I talk often about how these are, each of us is given dominion over a little hose of creative force called mind energy or consciousness. And wherever we point it, we're going to get more of whatever we point it at. But it's just yes. that little piece. Yes. And, you know, it's just like, you get one little stream of water coming out of a hose. It's just a hose. It's just a garden hose. But you get 50,000 of those together and, you know, you can wear away a mountain pretty quick. So. Exactly. And what you call dominion, I call self-sovereignty. Doesn't matter to me. I mean, they're, they're to me, they're equivalent terms. Uh, just for the clarity of, of our listeners, Dominion is what I call self-sovereignty, and, and the reason I call it enlightened self-sovereignty is that it's light-driven, it is an, about enlightenment, and it is also a version of self-sovereignty that's about having positive impact on the, on the with whole. the groups, right. with the whole that we're part of. Well, and it's, it's, it's like holons. Yeah. Right? Everything is a part of something bigger and everything has smaller parts, et cetera, et cetera, all ad infinitum. So that let, let me just say that I want to back off of that and hand it back to you to talk a little bit more about the reimagining humanity and how that might happen with what you're building here at the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty. Thank you. Well, the the whole idea is that with the spark blueprint i don't see how it's possible to picture an elevated future for humanity as long as we are locked into whichever societal and personal spells we're locked into if we're still locked into either or both of those types of spells so we've got to shatter those spells we've got to awaken from the spells that we've been under in order to be capable of picturing an enlightened future. And we can't stop with just picturing it because then our head's in the clouds and our feet aren't on the ground. We've got to get clear about what our appointed role as individuals and as collections of individuals is in helping that enlightened future emerge because the amount of things that need to be shifted, that need to be elevated, are far greater 
than any one person or one group can do on their own. However, if each of us is doing our own appointed part in helping that future emerge, then all of us collectively cover all bases that are needed. And that's why I'm exceedingly optimistic because, you know, <laughs> thinking that I have to put on my shoulders or any individual has to put on their shoulders all of what has to happen for humanity to elevate into uh, into spiritual expression in the physical universe, that's an impossibility. And it's a formula for for collapsing into helplessness yeah, or hopelessness. burnout, right. Or burnout, yeah. Um, but each of us doing our part, that's manageable. So we can't picture an elevated future until we're free from the spells. We can't enact that future until we're clear about what our part individually is in helping that future emerge. And we're clear about the belief system, the paradigm that supports us in fulfilling our part. And we can't actualize our part in helping that future emerge without elevating certain skills that vary from person to person, depending on their skills gaps and, the, and their calling. Um, to, we have skills to develop in order to fulfill our role in helping that future emerge. And then we collaborate with, with those that are doing things that are aligned with what helps us actualize our purpose uh, it's to me it should be common sense but it's not because people haven't been taught this and so in the spark blueprint i i unpack ingredient by ingredient in, by ingredient step by step by step in how to build each of those five ingredients in the spark blueprint in a personally customized way I'm glad you do. And I know that there are going to be people who think in a similar way to what you, the way you think, and they're going to find that extraordinarily useful. There are other people who are going to be, um, I'll say more general in their approach and, or more fluid. Yes. So there, so there are the same kinds of things other people have been getting at for quite a while. Dr. Michael Rice has a, a model where he says, everybody's got a primary purpose, which is the same for every human being. He calls that developing and then strengthening a viable, conscious, spiritual body. And it's the same for everybody. Got the primary purpose, same for every human on the planet, according to him. Secondary purpose is going to be unique to the individual. And he says, make a list of 10 things you're naturally good at. And then that could be a challenge for some people, but it's doable. They start to come out when you focus on them, right? And then 10 things that you love to do. And then make a description of how the world's going to look through your eyes when it's perfect, right? So here's, <laughs> this is the blending you're talking about, right? Take the individual view of the world. And then he says, you just create a a purpose statement for your secondary purpose that says, I'm not going to use one, two, or three things that I'm naturally good at as I do one, two, or three things that I love to do as a way of helping the world become this vision that I have of this perfect. And, and it's not as detailed as your blueprint. And yet I hear it and see it as almost exactly the same thing. There's a huge amount of overlap. And I'll unpack a little bit of that in a moment. But what I want to say first is that this is exactly why I said a few minutes ago that this is a blueprint or a roadmap for people who thrive best with roadmaps. Because I know, just as you do, that not everybody needs or flourishes with that kind of structure. Some people flourish best with a more flow oriented approach. Uh, so I don't think the spark blueprint is for everyone. I don't think the center for enlightened self sovereignty is for everyone. Again, I'm not supposed to do something that's for everyone. I'm supposed to do something for people who are wired in a particular way that matches what I've, what I'm providing. Right. 
and uh, just as others are doing that. The thing that I would say, though, in in response, uh, having to do with the, the contrast between my version of what he's talking about and his version, is that my experience is that we have two missions, two mission statements. One, one mission statement is what I call our soul growth mission statement. And while I agree with what you've just described about the, the soul growth mission that all of us have, the soul growth that any individual has as the centerpiece of their lifetime in their own soul growth is going to be a very individualized and personal version of that universal uh, soul growth mission. And then the other mission is our impact mission in the world. And these two missions are supposed to be integrated with each other. My soul growth mission is supposed to inform and uh, and Energize. activate, right. actualize Energy, yeah. my, my impact mission. And my impact mission, if it's well constructed and well integrated, is going to help with my soul growth. But I see them as two different and yet integrated separate mission statements. And so I have a very step-by-step -step process for helping people discover what their soul growth mission statement is and what their impact mission statement is. And you have this website, T-H-E-C-E-S-S dot com. And it's the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty. And you're yes. inviting people to apply to this. Can you tell us about what what's this? What are you inviting people to? Sure. Well, first of all, I'm inviting them to the cess.com to have a look around to see if what is written there and the, the videos that are there resonate for them. If if this is the approach to elevating themselves and humanity that resonates for them. If it isn't, that's not a problem. They're not stuck. There are other ways to do it, right? So the purpose of the cess.com is for helping people to discover, yes, this fits for me. No, this doesn't fit for me. For those who it does fit, there's an application process on the website that they can access in order to apply to become a member of the Center for Self-Sovereignty. And the basic membership in the center is free. So the purpose of the application form is that it's a sacred community and sacred in the sense that the only people that belong in that community are people who are, as I, as you heard me say in, in part one, or maybe it was at the beginning of part two, uh, that they are like spirited, like hearted and diverse minded people who have a different sense of, of, uh, of, humanity's future if they want a homo machina future forget it that's this this is not for them uh if if they want to be in a tribe or in a community where everyone thinks the same rather than where diversity is welcomed because none of us sees the whole picture but all of us in collaboration can discover the whole picture together that's the diversity i'm talking about if somebody doesn't want that kind of diversity, they don't belong in the center. So the purpose of the application form is to make sure that the people who are going to find a home for themselves in the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty are the ones who become members. And the ones who for whom this is not their home, I hope they'll become involved with and members in some other approach to helping humanity's best future emerge. Excellent. So what happens if people join? What happens if people join is that they then get access to the community and to the training and to initiatives that the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty is um, bringing about for helping humanity's future emerge so that they can um, discover and decide whether one or more of those initiatives help them forward their purpose in helping 
humanity's best future emerge, or for the members to uh, to develop other initiatives that some of those members are more aligned with in terms of helping their future, their their purpose actualize. So it's a collaboration network, uh, like a private social network, if you will, uh, and a training process and a resources uh, source. And it's for leaders, innovators, and uh, influencers, and concerned citizens to collaborate with each other. Excellent. Thank you for that. And my mind is spinning on the training. When you say training, what are we training to? What are we getting trained in? The the Spark Blueprint. Okay. I, so that I just want to highlight that so you can talk about it. We're yeah. not being trained to think in a certain way or walk in lockstep. This is... People are being trained in a framework that helps them discover and live into their purpose in helping their version of humanity's best possible future and their own emerge. And uh, this has been launched how long now? It was officially launched in the fall of 2023. And it was launched in what you might call a friends and family way in the sense that my, my initial intention was to have not more than roughly 50 people in the center at the beginning to develop a vibrant community so that when the center becomes available for larger numbers of people to come in to it, that they're coming into something that's got a lot of vibrancy and interaction and aliveness in it. And so the, the, that is growing as we're recording this uh, this conversation, that that vibrancy is growing inside the center. And when it reaches a critical mass, if you will, um, that feels like, to me, like it's now ready for essentially a public launch, then we'll go into phase two of the, the, of the launch process. And of course, your listeners to this uh this broadcast are welcome to apply to become free members of the of the center if after they look at the website they feel like this way of helping humanity's future and their own emerge is a right fit for them excellent well i'm uh honored to be uh allowed to talk to you about this before the public launch and um um heartened by the similarities clearly between some of our uh, source material and our paths over the years and um, your i'll call it a kind of a pure uh, intention to do good and uh, that i'm always energized when i run into people where there's that sense of i'm doing this because i have this drive within me i can't really I wouldn't want to shut it off, but I couldn't shut it off if I tried yeah. to just do good. Yes. Whatever that looks like through my eyes. Totally true. And if I can piggyback on one part of what you were just saying, you were describing, I think, what in theology is called the perennial wisdom or the perennial philosophy, which is that there are certain principles that cut across time and cultures and religions and spiritual paths. They're universal and they're timeless. And the only difference from one articulation of those perennial wisdom principles and another articulation is window dressing. It's, it's because different people are structured psychologically and spiritually in different and temperamentally in different ways. And so some articulations of the perennial wisdom resonate more for certain people and other articulations resonate more for other people. So what I'm a fan of is the perennial wisdom and what form an individual re most resonates with, that's the form I would encourage them to really surrender into wholeheartedly and whole spiritedly. I, I support you in extending that invitation. Excellent. 
Well, let me ask you to just get centered and take a breath and think, all right, so here's all the stuff that we've done in these last pile of minutes. And we've talked about your beginnings and what the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty is. And if you just think about it, is there something that you want to go back and highlight that we've already talked about or something we haven't even touched on yet that you want to bring out? Great question. I think what I would do is to go back to reiterate one of the things I've said in a different way, which is that there are antidotes to chronic stress, chronic anxiety, fear, uh, chronic anger and rage, rebelliousness that really doesn't move people forward, and um, and learned helplessness that keeps people stuck. There are antidotes to all of that. <clears throat> and each person's responsibility, if they want an antidote to any of those things, is to find a framework and a pathway and a community that they feel best supports them in outgrowing that stress and fear and anger and rebelliousness and learned helplessness in order to emerge into being what we're meant to be in the first place, which is expressions or conduits of higher love and wisdom in the physical universe in order to bring about heaven on earth, if I shorthand it that way, or to bring about humanity's best future and our own. That's a lot. I like the idea that you're talking about being the conduit for this other energy, right? This idea that we aren't just the physical and we can express in, as we talked about earlier, in ways that my conscious logical mind can't even begin to comprehend a loving, a creative, a productive energy um, that as we saw, I mean, most people listening to this will have experiences where it's not something they planned, but they stumbled into an interaction with somebody or the career that they're in or the, the way things resolved with a conflict in their life that they could never have imagined in the intellectual realm. And so as I hear you talking about being a conduit for that loving energy, it has so many facets for me that are as I like to quote Guy Finley, who says, there is nothing more practical than true spirituality. Right. Than true spirituality. Yes. So we can direct people if they want to check out the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty to your website at the, T-H-E-C-E-S-S dot -E -S -S com. Correct. That's the place to go to see if this is the version of perennial wisdom that fits right for you. Excellent. Well, any closing comments? Just that I've really enjoyed our conversation and I love how you brought into our conversation other perspectives or other lenses that these very lofty and far-reaching concerns and possible solutions um, can, can take in the form of words and frameworks. And I'm hoping that that those who have listened to our conversation are recognizing that there is that there isn't one pathway to our best future, but there is a fundamental choice for each of us to make about which version of humanity's future we want to be part of. Are we going to become 21st century serfs or are we going to become 21st century conduits of higher love and wisdom as homo spiritus, as human spirits? Excellent. Well, I greatly appreciate your being willing to share that with us. And I look forward to applying and finding out what is building in this collaboration that you have. And, um, also looking forward to the next time we get together and talk about how it's grown and blossomed. Me too. Well, thank you so much. Blessings.
Blessings back. Dr. David Gruder playfully refers to himself as a recovering psychologist and professional troublemaker. In actuality, he is a 12 award winning, best selling integrative psychologist who radio TV interview report named America's integrity expert, drawing on an unparalleled range of board leadership, training, consulting, business, and clinical roles that he has filled over the past five decades. He founded the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty. Its purpose is to help usher in spiritually elevated next chapter in humanity. Through the center, Dr. Gruda works with concerned citizens, government and community leaders, business owners and executives, influencers in the media, education, and the helping professions to maximize their positive impact in their respective fields. He also provides keynotes, training programs, mentoring, consulting, books, videos, and media appearances. Through all of these activities, he equips leaders, influencers, and concerned citizens with the missing spiritual inner and outer skills for maximizing their positive impact in their chosen spheres of influence. Dr. Gruder's main website is drgruder.com. You've been listening to the On Your Mind podcast, offered by Journey's Dream, where we support people through mental health challenges to a place of true and lasting well-being. If you love our show, we invite you to visit onyourmindpodcast.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our helpful resources. Thank you for listening.